Alrighty YouTube, another one of Kip's Clips. So, I've been mentioning quite a lot about uh, what's happening between Japan and China at the moment. Uh, the tensions and the rhetoric uh, keep snowballing uh, out of control. And uh, a lot of the times when I've, I've been talking about that, I've always mentioned as well that America has a defence treaty with Japan. There's a lot of bases there, a lot of military parked up there as well and uh, they still have a mutual defence treaty uh, if Japan gets attacked um, the US uh, are obliged by the treaty uh, to defend Japan so <clears throat> came across this article, this was out a couple of days ago that the US um, has stressed its commitment to defend Japan uh, in Washington talks now the reason they came out and um, said this, if you're unaware of the uh, internal uh, goings on in Japan, which I am ever so slightly, a wee bit, at the moment um, they are swinging towards right-wing uh, nationalism, they're looking to, at the moment they are, their armed forces, their navy, uh, so on, their armed forces are only allowed to be a defensive force um, I think they're actually called defensive forces. It's not not called army or navy. It's called a Japan naval defense force or something like that. Um, and they're only allowed to build up to a certain to a certain degree after World War Two. <coughs> and they're looking to scrap that. They're looking to um, be allowed to build up their military um, yet again. Uh, we see this happening with uh, recently I've covered the what's happening with Germany and uh, their foreign policies moving towards more of a proactive um, foreign policy um, Germany want to project their military strength further than they have for a long time they want to be more involved to use their troops more and um, it was only recently in Mali I believe it was I might be getting that wrong that f the French um, the French were down in Mali and uh, Germany um, actually bounced in and helped them. I'm going to quickly check this. Uh, yeah, I think it was in Mali. Yeah, it was, it was Mali. I was right. The German troops, the German Air Force uh, and the British helped out with the logistics to get the French troops into Mali. That... Um, I don't know the exact ins and outs of it, but it was a indicator of Germany getting more involved, uh, more actively involved in their foreign policy. <coughs> it's still, for me even, and I'm only, um, Jesus, what age am I? I'm only 32, and uh, for me, I still see there being a perception of people still be taken aback seeing German troops in other countries it has lots of connotations and stuff and I think what you'll see now is Germany trying to be more proactive maybe I'm wrong that's just a perception I have correct me if I'm wrong I'm not it's a perception I have wrong I have so don't correct me if I'm wrong I'm not wrong it's my perception uh, whether you have a different one or not I perceive that people would still there's still a, there are still people out there that would be uncomfortable seeing German armed troops oh dear me on the streets <coughs> so um this for me goes towards what I've been saying in the sense that World War Three is already happening. It's the, the, after the set up of the BRICS, this this was inevitable. People have drawn their line in the sand. Economically, military, uh, geopolitically speaking, countries have picked sides. The whole Snowden thing. You've seen a lot of Latin America, um, uh, including Brazil, part of the BRICS going towards the Russian sphere of influence with the Bolivian president being involved in the charade about bringing down uh, his plane, uh, which was uh, lies. <coughs> so this is even more concerning. Uh, well, let's, let's initially go to this versus out in the fourth. And um, this is the rhetoric coming out from Japan, them actually talking about wanting to be in a position to be more right wing and more proactive about defending themselves using the we're not sure if America can defend us so we now need an army and not a defence force 
which is a green light for them to build up their army and their navy, and so on and so forth. So, um, in public, Japanese Prime Minister Abe governments uh, lists a more assertive China and of um, violent North Korea as its top security concerns. Behind the scenes, though, another concern is growing that the United States may one day be unable or unwilling to defend Japan. Interviews with Abe advisors, politicians and security experts show the worries are adding momentum to Abe's drive to beef up Japan, uh, Japan's air and naval forces while loosening constitutional limits on action its military can take abroad. See, I don't know whether, it's not mentioned it yet, but go and look into the technicalities of it. It's a defence force J Japan technically have at the moment. I know it's just a name because they still have love bombs and bullets, but um, this is them trying to get the shackles off and be more a proactive military, military speaking. Japan's angst over the country's... <coughs> Security alliance with Washington follows years of double-digit defence spending increased by uh, Tokyo's arch-rivals in Asia, China, uh, unpredictably North Korea, whose missiles can hit Japan and meanwhile push ahead with nuclear and missile programmes despite international sanctions. If you are a strategic thinker or an alliance planner, you have to be ready for the worst-case scenario, a former Japan, uh, Japanese diplomat close to Abe told Reuters. So another unnamed source could be lies, could be just made up bullcrap, planted story told Reuters citing concerns um, about a decline in US military capability and readiness now even if, like what I mean in a sense like somebody probably has said this to Reuters and said keep the source uh, unanimous or it won't be your source again but that again that, that could uh, just be a propaganda put out there, a leak, something to colour the, the, the try to manipulate the public perception of what's going on this me personally this could be a planted story for the public to be more accepting of Japan building up their military as if like oh they're scared no look at the amount of US troops in Japan there's no but anyway so that's but that's but I think this is a planted story to give uh, Japan more public Credible, eh, less public resistance to them building up their military. Um, so we should discuss roles and missions including the kind of weapons we have or don't have, added the ex-diplomat who requested an anonymity because he doesn't hold an official position. Um, conservatives like Abe um, also long for greater an autonomy from Washington. No one suggested that Japan hosts um, to to nearly 50,000 US troops will go alone. The US-Japan alliance is the most important alliance and that will not change, said that dude, a national security advisor to Abe, but Japan will become a more of an adult uh, and a normal country. Japan has even begun studying whether it boosts, whether to boost its limited ability to make a preemptive strike on enemy bases, although such a costly and conventional step seems unlikely soon. So I'll leave a link for us down below, you can go and check it out. <clears throat> You'll get all the rhetoric about them building up their military. Now let's um, skip forward a few days and um, yeah, let's take it from the source. Let's go to Reuters. <coughs> so this was out uh, four days after this and it's the US um, response. So the US uh, on Friday stressed its commitment to defend J uh, Japan. Uh, the commitment to the defence of Japan and stability in the Asian Pacific region against a backdrop of increasingly a set of territorial claims by China. So this is an anti-China hit piece. Right, whether you, whether you, like the rock, they're, they're arguing over a rocky outcrop, okay, um, China's built up its military, it's now trying to use that military to project its power further. It's going to reach, um, it's going to get resistance. The Philippines just got hot with a a hurricane, some people said it was man-made, who knows, but what happened as a result of that hurricane, um, we sent also, well, I say we, we, the Western powers sent a lot of um, love bombs and bullets and um, <laughs> warships and stuff to go and help the people of the Philippines. Um, just went and rocked up a lot of military hardware on the back door of China. But nothing to see here because they won't, I mean, that's what we need. We need uh, rockets, bombs, bullets, and uh, trained killers to help people out in a hurricane. We need the trained killers 
to go and help people after a hurricane. Uh, and I know there's an argument that it's better than no help at all and they are there and they've got the time, logistics, so on and so forth. Yeah, I hear that argument, but it's just a coincidence that they rock up, sit in China's backyard, and I don't even know whether they've moved there, moved away from there yet or they're still sitting in China's backyard. Um, so um, the, this is how they're obviously putting, piling the propaganda pressure on China. <clears throat> After a meeting with Japanese Foreign Minister, that dude, John Kerry emphasised the importance of the US-Japan relationship, which both countries say remain robust uh, in spite of a bump. After Japanese Prime Minister Abe visited a controversial war shrine in December, Kerry said the United States and Japan were committed to close security collaboration and stressed a long-standing US commitment to defend Japan if it is attacked. This is exactly what I've been saying for a long time when people... I've been stressing that this thing over this these islands, I think the Philippines and Thailand are even in the mix bitching and moaning about this wee rocky outcrop. Nobody stays there, but they've recently found gas and oil reserves in the territorial waters around it. Um, and they're bitching and moaning over this wee sort of a rocky outcrop. And um, go and look at the concentrations they've had. They've had, like, their, their boats have been ramming each other, fisher boats, the Coast Guard boats, they've been rams, ramming and stuff. At one point, I'm getting the, I'll get this round the wrong way, it was either a Chinese vessel locked their radar onto a Japanese vessel or vice versa. I can't remember who it was now. I think it was China that locked their radar on to a vessel. Um, so there's a lot of um, threatening poster, po posturing going on there. If you look at Kashmir, there's a lot of bullets still flying. I know Kashmir's a, like, a, a tangent, but if you go and look at disputed areas where there's military build-up on both sides, bullets do go flying. People will get killed and then it can escalate a war. Then that means China and America are technically at war. Happy days! Just in the cusp of when um, you see China and Russia um, leaders doing quite a lot of photo ops in and around the Sochi Olympics. <coughs> Look at the bullcrap that the, the, the Western media and the Russian media are doing with the Olympics. It's the best one ever! It's the worst one ever! It's the best, it's the best Olympics ever! It's the terror, 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 toothpaste, terror! Um, I mean, it's a joke. Um, and, uh, yeah, and what you see now is a lot of rhetoric coming out from all sides. I'll leave a link for all this down below. You can go and read it all yourselves. I want to try and um, expand on these articles and do a bit of analyst, uh, analyse it a wee bit as well because I'm, I'm sorry, this is what, this is, um, what, what I'm meaning when I'm saying World War Three is happening just now. The battle has already begun. Um, World War Three won't be like World War. World War Two wasn't like World War One. World War One wasn't like any war before it. <clears throat> the new type of warfare is all Al Al Qaeda, um, Al Nusra, Al whatever you want to call them, uh, rebels. Like whatever. Po it's all going to be wee pockets of um, so-called terrorist fighters. Um, I'll leave it there, I'll leave a link for all this down, uh, all these articles down below, you can go and check it out. But, um, worrying times, I mean, really worrying. <laughs> I mean, really worrying. Um, Japan and China are on the edge of literally firing bombs and bullets at each other, which would be, I don't know, what would you call that? War. And, um, ah, I don't know, I've, I've said it all. Link for all this will down below. Thumbs up, share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus if you're glad I brought the information to your attention. Subscribe to my channel. Keep up to date with the latest news. Check out the radio show. Leave all your comments below. Good, bad, ugly and indifferent. All are all welcome. TruthFrequencyRadio.com every Sunday, 6 to 8 p.m. UK time. You get me and Kev there, Gun, Glasgow Underground News Network. Alrighty, YouTube, thanks for listening. Catchies.